career. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Cedric Kushner Productions presents an evening of professional boxing for your entertainment here at the theater in Madison Square Garden, New York City. Brought to you in association with the King of Beers, Budweiser, and sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairman, New York City Police Commissioner, Raymond Kelly. This first bout is a presentation of main events and Mike Acri promotions. The three judges at ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point must system will be Don Ackerman, Luis Rivera, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Jimmy Santa. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing. This is in the junior welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with white and weighing in at 141 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, 26 victories, including 19 knockouts with only two losses and one draw. From St. Louis, Missouri, here is the former junior welterweight champion of the world, Teron Tramp And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue, and weighing in at 141 and one half pounds. His professional record, 33 victories, including 27 knockouts with five defeats. From Jersey City, New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, the ultimate blood and guts warrior, former junior lightweight champion of the world, Arturo Thundergaard. Good evening, gentlemen. We went over all the rules in the locker room. Let's touch gloves and have a good fight. Go ahead. Well, that says his plan is to get there first with the most. Gaddy says he's no longer happy to just be ha just have a recognition as a tough fighter. Who loses? Somebody's got to give. And if ever there were an opportunity for Arturo Gatti to reestablish his boxing skills, this should be it. Because Millette doesn't jab all that much. His game is simply to step inside and get in position to fire power shots. So Arturo could seize the style initiative if he stays away in boxes. We'll see. One thing about Gatti, he's got power. You can't practice that. You can't put it on the stool. You either have it or you don't. Mullet is an athlete, which means he see punches before they happen. He can get out of the way. Hard right hand shot by Gaddy lands flush. You saw Millette with a power shot earlier. Millette is a good fighter, but he doesn't have the great delivery of a straight right hand and left hook and all of that. Everything he does is athletically. He just gets it done. That's a good point, George. Doesn't jab his way inside. He tends to get in there with footwork, tenacity, kind of a scratch and sniff fighter, but his athletic talent has given him a chance to get away with it. His athletic talent. That's what he has tonight. Well, he had good enough athletic talent to beat Vince Phillips, who was then the recognized junior welterweight champion. So he brings some credentials to the game. Oh, he's not going to keep no those credentials as long as if he allowed Gotti to hit him in the stomach. Yeah, and one thing that's evident is that Gaddy is quicker with his punches. He's beating him to the punch. Gaddy landed twice downstairs. Millette countered upstairs and landed another right hand flush. Millette just seems to be out of the way at the right time. Gotti is moving around. He's not being so aggressive. Well, he's going to have to move more, George. Uh, there's a CompuBox number that's startling. It shows that in his fights against good, good opponents, the last five fights, Arturo Gatti has been hit by 60% of his opponent's power punches. He's hard to miss at short range. No head movement at all. Tonight, a little bit more side to side, at least so far. 
Mullet is already starting to absorb some power by Gotti. He shouldn't do that. You don't want to be in hit early and absorbing that kind of punishment. You're gonna box box. Hard right hand by the left. And you heard George talk about Gaddy's punching power. The money punch there is his big left hook. Millet has got to understand that if he's gonna win this, it's not gonna be trading power shots. Five Gatti. seconds, fellas. Round one comes to a close, a round in which Arturo Gotti made good on his promise to try to box more than has been the case in the past. No, no, baby, no. Just straight. Beautiful. Keep doing that with the jab. Keep circling to your right. How you feeling? Good. Beautiful. Just doing some more. Okay, that's okay. You're doing beautiful. See how the right hand's working? Keep circling to your right. Okay? Cause... So what the hell are you doing? Then relax yourself and do what the hell you're supposed to do. Gaddy, too quick with the right hand for Millette. Gaddy, of course, is a notorious bleeder, but he says he's decided that the best way to avoid bleeding is to not be hit as much. Sounds like the right plan, George. CompuBox numbers in round one. Gaddy, 25 out of 62. Millette, 14 out of 55. Most notably, Gaddy threw 32 jabs, landed 10 of them. Referee Jim Santa warning Millette not to hold and hit. Millette has found the wrong fight to fight tonight. You got to hit and move out of the way and make Gaddy start to go back and revert to his old habits. Yeah, you could hear that Millette's father and trainer, Marvin Millette, was not happy between rounds. Basically saying, why didn't you go in and do what you said you were going to do? When a boxer, when a fighter is trying to box, you move around and make him decide, look, I'm a fighter. That's what I am. And that's what Millette is not doing. trainer buddy McGirt urging him to keep jabbing and keep moving to his right circling to his right apparently to stay away from Millette's right hand McGirt has apparently made the deduction that Millette's more dangerous from the right side than the left there's those athletic moves I was telling you about the oh, oh, there's there's a good short right hand by Millette yep always a little bit out of the way like an athlete Looks as though the left eye of Gaddy is beginning to puff. Gaddy's in charge now. He's got the power punches in the body. Two rounds of body shots. Left jab. He's in control. And a left hook to the body sets up a big left hook upstairs there by Arturo Gaddy. And a right uppercut lands flush. Teron Millet taking a lot of power shots here in the middle stages of round two. Another left hook to the body lands deep. And again, the uppercut follows, and Millette is in trouble as he backs up to the ropes. I think he didn't understand the power that got ahead. Someone didn't tell him. Now Millette lands a big left hook. That backs Gatti up. Well, Millette is showing the same kind of ability to bounce back that we've expected from Gatti. He took some serious punishment in the middle of the round and came back and landed an excellent combination on Gaddy. But this is the kind of fight that Gaddy needs. I mean, he wants you to mix it up with him, letting him rest, come back, let him get his power back. Five seconds, fellas. Three seconds. Millette is seconds. not fighting a smart fight at all. Next Saturday night, out from two different locations, HBO, the heart and soul of boxing, and the net result of that, Larry Merchant, 
is that in eight days here on HBO, you get to see the three fighters generally regarded by pound-for-pound pound rankings as the top three fighters in the sport, Mosley, Hopkins, and Jones. I couldn't have said it better, Jim. Incidentally, what's your ranking these days? I've got Mosley, Hopkins, and Jones. In that order. In that order. Hopkins based on his winning streak and his great victory over Felix Trinidad. Now Mullet is starting to use his left jab a little bit. Think. Whenever you see a boxer using his left jab, that means he's thinking. Just throwing right to left means he's fighting. Incidentally, the uh, Ring Magazine, Bible of the Sport, concurs with Larry Merchant on the pound for pound rankings. One Mosley, two Hopkins, three Jones at this moment. Oh, that uppercut by Gotti just missed. Body, right hand to the body. Those are the kind of shots that take away your power if the fight goes beyond seven or eight rounds. And that's one Gatti big difference. Gotti is those kind of shots in. One big difference in the two fighters, George. Gatti remembers to go to the body frequently. Millette almost never goes to the body. He's a head hunter. Yep. He's not looking anywhere but he got his head. Mixed in a right hand to the body there, but by and large, Millette is trying to land Thunder on Thunder Gatti upstairs. And he lands it with the right hand in. Best stand. right hand of the fight. Well, that's not exactly hard to hit. Sometimes your corner, your trainers just don't tell you the extent of the, the power a guy has. And I think that was left out with Mullet. They didn't tell him that Gotti can hurt you with one punch. Gotti showing some discipline. The kind of fighter he was, Stop. once no, again, no a break, right when he gained everybody's attention in his fights against Tracy Patterson. Wasn't that punch hey, that did okay. it? Where are you? Okay, let's go. I'm watching it. Jimmy Santa asking Millette where he is. Millette says New York City. I think you're absolutely right, George. I don't think Millette anticipated Gaddy's power at all. It was the first few punches of the first round he hadn't recovered from. Ruffling is really no looking good. And Gaddy gets target practice here as Jim Santa watches closely. And the round comes to a close, saving Millette for the moment. Take a look at him, Doc. Referee Jimmy Santa calling in a ringside physician. Showing patience and poise as a boxer, still carrying thunder. Arturo Getty with opponent who comes to him. And now he will try to close the show. In round three by CompuBox numbers, Gaddy landed 28 out of 46 power shots, 61%. Harold, how do you have it scored through three? Okay, Jim, three rounds to nothing, 30 to 26, Arturo Gaddy. Jim, in the second round, I thought it was close to a 10-8 round when Terrell Mallet was nearly at, but he came back with a good left hook. In the third round, score a 10 to 8. But I got to tell you, at the very end of the round, when Terrell Mallet went into those ropes, Jimmy Santa could have called that a knockdown as well. Only one knockdown so far, so round three, 10 to 8.
Four big shots from Gaddy landing flush on Millette. George this, Foreman. This state is aware of the power of G Gaddy. He's done in some guys in this state, and the referee should be closing in on this is not going to happen again. They're watching carefully. And, and even though Gaddy's landed big shots toward the end of the last round and here early, it's really the accumulation of punishment that's doing this. And we've seen what he could do here a couple years ago. Probably the best Artura Gaddy has looked since the second of his two great fights with Ivan Robinson. Both of those fights were won by Robinson, who frankly outboxed the stronger Gaddy. Gaddy's doing some good body punching here, too, so it's not like the fight is going to get out of his hand. He's, Mullet's just going to get the worst of this as the min minutes go by. Millet, Millet is a tough, determined fighter who is taking some wicked, wicked punishment. And he doesn't seem to have a plan. I mean, there isn't, there doesn't seem to be some wrinkle that Millet can bring to this at the moment that will change what's happening in the ring. He's, He's got to hold on. you got to hold on. Down again. That could be it. Five, six, seven, eight. Look at me. Look at me. Matt, where are you? Well, he He's still knows he's in Madison Square Garden. Yep. But I don't think the referee knows where he is. Somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah, this is unnecessary at this point. And that will do it. Jim Santa stopping it on what amounts to the third knockdown. And as Harold Letterman pointed out, could easily have been ruled four knockdowns. As Artura Gatti annihilates Teron Millette in his best-looking performance in quite a while. It's all about boxing this time. The first round, moving around the ring, saving his head. And throwing more than 30 chances. And being in condition, which gives you self-confidence, and finding the weight where he should be at 140. To say nothing of finding an opponent who was ideal for him tonight. And, and cut man Joe Souza <laughs> grabs Gaddy and hugs him and says, I Millet's. can't believe it, you didn't get cut. And here's the first knockdown of Teron Millette here in round number four. Backs up with his left hand down. That means hit me with a right hand, please. And Arturo obliged him. Here's another look at that. There it goes. Got to tell your fighters, you back up, keep your hands up. That's left hooks, overhand rights combinations Gotti is looking like Ray Leonard <laughs> well sort of throwing combinations and getting out of the way not being hit that's all you can ask of a box no, it's a brilliant performance for Arturo combinations and Teron Millet at age 33 has had some wars maybe he's uh, gonna be moving on toward other things to do because he's really the kind of guy who sees himself as a championship caliber fighter, I don't think Tehran is going to want to stick around. These were all hit shots there. Yeah, absolutely. You got it. Now to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on Thank Gaddy's victory. Jimmy Santa, following the second knockdown in round number four, calls a halt to the bout. At two minutes and 23 seconds of that round, the winner by knockout victory, the ultimate blood and guts warrior from Jersey City, New Jersey. Former champion Arturo Thunder Gotti.